Hi everybody, happy Thursday. Uh, I'm a couple of minutes late. I was upstairs in the kitchen just talking with my husband who came home from work and then looked at my watch and said, oh, 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 <laughs> I'm a little late. Okay, so thank you for joining me this evening. Tonight, I'm gonna make the last of my cute little Halloween projects. I wasn't actually sure how much time I was gonna have because uh, it is Halloween evening and my daughter is off to decorate at her work tonight. And uh, so I was like kind of running around a little bit late this afternoon because I've got another tutorial I need to film this evening. So we've got this little cute guy here. He's a little frightfully cute container for lack of a better whatever. He actually stands up and, oh, I guess I don't think I glued it quite tight enough this afternoon. So he's got some pretzels in him because I am tired of candy at this point. We're going to see a lot of it on Sunday. I'd kind of went with something that's a little more healthy in the grand scheme of things because this is actually uh, sodium free pretzels, but it works for those of us who are older and shouldn't eat a whole lot of salt. They work. Okay, so to make this cute little guy tonight, we're actually gonna use a set of dies, or at least I've cut them out, with a set of dies that we haven't talked about before here. So the all dressed up dies, they are actually meant to go with a completely different stamp set. They've got like lipstick and shoes, and it's kind of a girly stamp set and whatnot. But it gives us this big die here. And two of these big dies will give us this little container here, this box, okay? So if you go to the catalog and you have a look, you're gonna see all kinds of samples and examples there of two of these put together that create a purse. Because generally what you do is you take these little notches in on the side and you fold them in and then you've got like a cute little purse shape. But for something like this, you can actually fold it out, okay? So we're gonna start with this. I'm gonna put that over to the side. All right, I have two of these cut already. Okay, so they're right over here. Got these ones. And the first thing I'm gonna do, which makes it really, really, really easy, like super easy, is I'm actually just gonna stamp the Happy Halloween to you all the way across, just in pumpkin, pumpkin pie ink, because that's the color of the paper. All right, so I'll put you guys over there. I just wanna make sure that I'm not like, you know, kind of sitting in front of everything. I have a complete different set of things of products and paper and everything sitting on the floor beside me because I have to film a tutorial tonight for a site called Split Coast Stampers. And so for people who have been involved in stamping forever in a day, they would know Split Coast as a place that you can go and you can type in stamp set names and you can see all kinds of different samples by people from around the world, right? It's not something that's like purely Stampin' Up! driven. It's not purely demonstrator driven, but back in the really early days, like that was really the only place to go to if you wanted kind of ideas and stuff. So they have asked me to put together a tutorial for one of my cards that's gonna be posted on, I think it's the 8th of November. So all the photographs are done and all the instructions and everything like that, but I still have to film the tutorial, which is kind of freaking me out a little bit because when it goes live, it's like a global thing, right? So I wanna make sure that it's decent and, um, there's a lot going on this week at home because, you know, one kid's home from school, the other one was sick, we were waiting for COVID test, you know, the usual, right? It's the world we live in. And uh, so I didn't do it this afternoon. But the one who had the COVID test, she is off to work decorating tonight because she just had a really, really bad cold, which is fantastic, really good news. So I'm just chatting while I'm like stamping. And... Um, so I think things are kind of like moving back towards a little bit of normal again. All right, so as you can see, I'm just continuing to stamp the Happy Halloween all the way across on these. It's just an easy way to decorate without actually trying to make things look super pretty or taking a tremendous amount of time. Because when you look at this, you just want something that's going to sort of catch your eye in the background, but not be like front and center because you're gonna decorate the front of this. All right, almost there, okay. Happy Halloween to you and happy Halloween to you. How's that looking? That's pretty good. Okay, we close the ink up so I'm not running my fingers through it again. Okay, so we've got these two little guys here. Okay, so they've already got score lines in them. So I'm just gonna fold the little pieces of the box here on the score lines. I wanna fold the bottom flaps in and I wanna fold this little tab here on the side because this is where the adhesive is gonna go. I'm gonna do the same thing here on the bottom. Okay, just get those little ones in. Okay, 
Now, I realized like this one here, I actually just used the Stamp and Seal Plus to put it together because it should be strong enough to put it together. And I don't think that I sealed it well enough. Like I don't think I actually kind of pushed it all down. So the one side was starting to come apart. So I'm gonna go with the more traditional route and use the Terror and Tape uh, adhesive because it will absolutely stick and I won't have to worry about it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit along that long edge there. And I'm gonna put another bit along this long edge here. This stuff will absolutely stick. It is, it's kind of like the old red sticky tape that some of us still have lying around. It's just a lot easier to use because you can rip it and uh, you're not worried about those <laughs> big long red pieces of tape because they're really, really staticky and they just go everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna tape peel one off first and then I'm gonna take if I have the two of them side by side, I'm gonna effectively put them so that they are layering one on top of the other. Okay, all right, so we got that one. So now you've got this one big, long sort of box shape. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the other one off. And when I do that, uh, it doesn't wanna come off. There we go. When I do that, then I can take the box and I can put it together. All right, so I'm gonna fold this down just a little more. Gonna bring this over and I'm gonna glue it. Okay, this box is absolutely 100% not gonna come apart on me. Okay, so I'm gonna fold these little guys in here on the bottom and you could put adhesive in here if you want to, just on those in inside flaps. You don't have to, entirely up to you. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put some tear and, tear and tape adhesive right on there to keep the box closed. All right, so I'll do it on this side here. Okay, we've got the one there. I think I'm gonna put just a little bit more just on the sides here, because I don't want it to shift at all. I just want it to be nice and stable. Okay, now, okay. All right, I'm gonna peel these off. So tonight I'm making a Halloween version of this. Uh, I do have a Christmas one that I actually made last year. It is, um, oh, not even last year, it was two years ago at this point. I'm getting really confused, right? Because I was selling them at a craft show and clearly I didn't do any craft shows last year. So the Christmas one is like a Santa. It's like a Santa, he's got his, um, his suspenders and he's got his belt and he's really, really, really super cute. So I will show him to you at a later point in time because he's upstairs at the moment. Okay, so now I have this box, right? And as I had mentioned to you in the beginning, if you go and you fold these in, this is how you get your purse shape, right? You've got handles for it, and you can make a really cute purse for, you know, some kind of an occasion, whether it's Mother's Day or birthday, but we're not doing that. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna fold this outside, and then there's like a little bit of a score line in there. When you go and fold this out, it'll automatically catch those lines. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, so now I have my box, right? So it'll sit flat. You don't have to worry about doing anything else to it. It's gonna be happy, happy, happy. So I'm just gonna put it quickly over there. And then going back to this one, I have got bits and pieces here that I have taken from the Frightfully Cute stamp set, the matching dies, and then also the uh, Cute Halloween designer paper. Okay, and so because I wasn't 100% dead sure how much time I was gonna have tonight, I thought I was gonna have a little bit more because I thought Michelle didn't have to be at the squirrel until nine o'clock, but they left a few minutes ago because she has to be there for eight. Because you know, it doesn't matter if she spent the last three and a half days in bed, she had to go and decorate for Halloween tonight. All right, so what I did then is I took just a piece of scrap white paper and I stamped the Frightfully Cute on it with my black memento ink, you know, my standard kind of black ink. And then I did die cut it. This die here, the little silver one, this is the shape that the Frightfully Cute has been cut from and it is in the actual die set as well. So it's this one just down here. Okay, so this guy here, I don't know what you would call this shape. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. We're just gonna go with like kind of swirly Halloween-y thing background shape. Um, but I did go ahead and I cut a piece of the cute Halloween paper. So this, remember, you'll remember from a couple weeks ago, all of this paper is colored on one side and black and white on the other. So I did go and cut this piece here from the die. It's this one here from the same set. And I took some care to make sure that it was relatively straight. Like the points are pretty close to being even on there. So I'm just gonna move that one out of the way. I'm gonna move this one out of the way. 
And then the other thing that I cut ahead of time was I cut one of the trees. So same thing, this die is from the exact same set. It will cut this out quite nicely. And I, you can even cut it out of um, the glimmer paper as well. I just opted not to do that because I wanted to make sure that I was gonna have no issues with this tonight. Okay, so I have my backing piece. I've got my Frightfully Cute. I've got my tree. And then the next thing I need is I need one of the ghosts. So cute little ghosties are on one of the sheets of designer paper. There is not a punch for all of this. Like there is a punch that goes with some of these that will die cut, or I should say punch out the images in the other Halloween stamp set. There's nothing for these guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my small teeny, 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 teeny scissors. I can't believe I just went and cut through a ghost like that. What a waste of a good ghost. Oh, bad Wendy. Okay, so I've got my little ghost here. I am just gonna literally hand trim this guy. It's not a lot of effort because it's very, very straight lines, a little bit of a curve. And just make sure when you're doing this, when you're cutting, you always wanna make sure you cut the actual image and not turn your scissors, right? Oh, that's what I meant to say. Turn your image and not your scissors. Keep your scissors as straight as you can and let the paper move. You get a much better cut that way. Okay, all right. Oh, Kathy, I love this designer series paper too. It's adorable. After I uh, after I hang up tonight, I do need to film that other tutorial, and then I have two packages of Oreos sitting here. All those Oreos need to go into little Oreo packages before I go to work this weekend. Because you know, I'm trying to decide when I'm going to dress up for or dress up as on Sunday. I think if I can go and find some of my kids' Harry Potter paraphernalia, that would probably work really well, seeing as how I work in a bookstore. Okay. All right, so now we have our little ghosty here. Okay, so I've got my background, I've got my Frightfully Cute, got my ghost, got my tree, and I have the ribbon that we'll put on afterwards. So first thing I'm gonna quickly do is put on the tree. So I've got some of the liquid multi-purpose adhesive, and I'm actually only gonna put it just a little bit on the stem, stem, trunk of the tree, I should say, just enough to get it onto the other die cut, but because it's sticking out the top or off the top, I don't really want to have too much glue on there. Okay, so I've got him on there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to stick this guy down with just one of the regular dimensionals. So one of the ones that we all know and love. So big one, whoops, put that there in the center. I'm gonna peel it off. And I'm just gonna put the little cute ghosty on there, probably pretty close to the center, because he is really cute. Okay. Now, one thing I didn't learn until fairly recently is that the long strips that are in the catalog that we have in there that are really meant for like shaker cards, they make making shaker cards and things like that really easy. These are actually double the height of our regular Stampin' Dimensionals. And I always knew they were a little bit bigger, but I didn't realize they were that big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put a little bit on this side here and a little bit on this side here. And so when I put it on this, it's gonna pop it up even from the ghost. So I don't have to stack dimensionals together. Like in the past, historically, what we've done is if we want something to be extra tall, we would just stack dimensionals, uh, one on top of the other. But this is just ridiculously easy to do it this way. So I'm gonna put a little bit, oops, it's stuck. I gotta put a little bit here. And then I'm gonna cut just a little bit more on this side. So that's just one of those cute little like hints and tips. I had no idea, as I say, until somebody else mentioned it, because sometimes that's what it is, right? Okay. All right, and come on, there we go. Put that in there. And then I'm gonna quickly turn it over and stick it down. All right. Okay, so there we go. I think it's relatively straight. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so now I have my little frightfully cute guy that looks very similar to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually stick him on using just regular Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm gonna try and make sure that I stick him on straight so that he's not crooked because the one that's on this one here, when I originally put it on, it was not straight. So I have to peel it off and start again. So if you were to take it off, you would see there'd be some cardstock missing from underneath from when I peeled all those dimensionals off. And that's okay because nobody's gonna see it. And aside from you guys, no one's ever gonna know. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn this one over. Let's put him on and let's make sure he's straight before I stick him. I think he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Okay, so now he's on there. Okay, excellent. 
All right, so the second last thing, where's my ribbon? There it is. I'm just going to tie a just a quick, quick little knot in the end of this ribbon. It's very, it's going to be very close to the edge. This is the black and white gingham ribbon. It's in the holiday, like in the Halloweeny section of the of the, uh, the mini catalog. But frankly, I could use this on all kinds of stuff all year all year long. All right, so let's just cut off an end, and we're going to cut off another end, and grab a glue dot and stick it on. So as I had said. We are doing this tonight with a Halloween box, but you can certainly make other things with the dies that go with the um, All Dressed Up die set. So I have a Christmas one. We will certainly make some purses as time goes on because they're really nice little gifts. They make great um, gift card holders. You can take them once they're folded and slide the gift card in. So we'll certainly make them again. They're just one of those things that sat on my shelf that I almost forgot about because, you know, we all have a tendency to do that sometimes. Where did my stars go? There's my stars. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to quickly put on here is I have three of the stars on the front. And these are just in the little cute stars adhesive. Okay, grab three of the black ones. So put a big one, oh, just kind of over here. Maybe add a smaller one over here and then add another big one just down near the bottom. Okay, whoops, not two, just one. Oh, that was just one. Okay, and then one. Oh, yes, okay, good. Thought for a second I picked the star up and not the glue dot that it came with it. Okay, so there, so now I have two of these cute little frightfully cute, I keep saying cute because there's cute, the word cute is in everything. It's in the stamps, it's in the paper, it's on the stars, it's everything. So I have my little package of pretzels here and now I can just take them and I can just put them inside. There. So I have this cute little, sorry, I have this adorable, let's go with adorable, this adorable little package that I can turn around and give to somebody. It will probably end up being my husband and that's okay because he'll eat the pretzels quite gratefully. He likes them. Uh, I either don't know what I'm going to put in this one. I do have more pretzels. Maybe I'll put those in. Or maybe I will go get some Halloween candy from upstairs and load it in for Michelle. Because she would love it. She will be the only one of the three of them here this year for Halloween. So it's kind of nice that, you know, the kid in grade 11 still gets to enjoy this. Okay. If you have any questions about anything that I did this evening, then please go ahead and just add them into the comments or send me a quick email. Uh, it's wendy at wendyslittleinklings.com. This is the last week for you to take advantage of my 15th anniversary celebration. So don't forget, if you place an order in October, and it, there's no value attached to this, if you place an, October, um, place an order in October with me through the end of day Sunday through Halloween, you will receive an invitation to an exclusive class on November the 8th, and it's a holiday class. I can't show you the bits and pieces over here because some of those projects are already on the other table beside me. So, uh, and we will go ahead and we'll do that just like in a Zoom call on a Monday night so everybody can kind of talk to each other. If you go ahead and place an order online, add the host code for October, then you will get an extra, extra little thing that's worth $15 kind of as a, you know, as a thank you. Um, and I think... Think. let's see is there anything else oh and don't forget about our advent calendars where'd my advent calendar go oh it's over there hold on i'm gonna go get it oh come, 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 come. Uh, i have piles of stuff everywhere if you guys could see my craft room you would be <laughs> you would be very very sad and laugh at me but okay so this is one of our advent calendars okay there are 24 doors on it and they are going to be filled this year with Stampin' Up! products, so ribbon and embellishments, as well as some other little surprises. There is going to be a coupon behind one of the doors, and one of these calendars is going to have a gold ticket in it. So for anybody who gets the gold ticket, they will be able to choose a $30 stamp set from the January mini catalog, so the one that takes you through the winter and the spring. The total value, if you look at the class and everything else, is $75 for everything. And uh, Amy and I are selling them for $45. So once we have all the orders, because the um, reservation period closes on November the 10th, once we have all the orders, we're going to go ahead and order the product because we cannot do that until we have the reservations. This is kind of like a paper share. And then we will fill them all. We'll decorate the front of the calendars. Uh, we'll make sure everything is good with here with this. And we'll let everyone know when they're ready. So, yes, yeah, so there is a link on my um 
on my Facebook page, but I will put it up again. If you want to go ahead and reserve one of the calendars, we're really excited because we know what's going in them. We know what the product is that is going inside. And there's some great, great things that are going to be in these calendars. So it's a great way to kind of, you know, reduce some stress or relieve some stress in December when things are going bananas because every day you can open a door and every day there'll be something crafty in there for your cards or your scrapbook pages or whatever it is you want to make. I will say there's no chocolate in here because we didn't want the chocolate to melt and get all over everything else. But you know, there's always chocolate to be had at Christmas. This time it's ribbon. There's ribbon in here along with other things. So it's not just ribbon. Okay, so $45, I'll put the link into the Facebook page, like just below this particular video so you can find it. Uh, Pre-order your, pre yours now. We can only do that until November 10th, then we will order everything and get them out to everybody who wants them. They are local pickup. If you live like a Durham region, you can come and grab them off my porch. They're also pickup available if you live like in Hamilton, the other side of the city, because that's where Amy is. And we're also making available local pickup, like porch pickup in Ottawa, because two of our kids go to school there. So between the one who's at the University of Ottawa and the one who's at Carleton, it's easy to do a porch pickup off of someone's porch in Ottawa. So there are ways to get around this. We will ship them across Canada. It is $17 to ship them because Canada Post likes to charge us an arm and a leg. And we're coming into the holiday season. So if you want one, please go ahead and pre-order it now. And we are so excited. We hope you get one. Um, okay. I think that truly is everything this evening. If there's anything else that you would like to know or have comments, please go ahead and add them below. Send me an email, send me a message. And it was lovely joining you this evening. So you guys all have a great, great night and try not to eat all the Oreos. Bye.